Welcome to our next episode of Frog Doc Friday. Today, episode 10, we are going to be going over our paper plate recall. So this is a really fun game um, that I actually learned from one of my mentors, Chad Mackin, who learned it from a gentleman named Dick Russell uh, that lived in Louisiana, who was a phenomenal dog trainer. Uh, but the paper plate recall is a really fun game and a really easy way to teach your dog how to come back to you when you call. There's a lot of great uses for this aside from just teaching the recall, but that's what we're mainly gonna be focusing on today. There's a reason it's called paper plate recall, and the reason is is because when it was invented by the gentleman Dick Russell, uh, dog trainer in Louisiana, he would take a paper plate, flip it upside down, and that's what he would be using to send his dogs out to and be able to recall them back. Uh, so, for our purposes, because I don't actually have a paper plate, and you can pretty much use anything that is similarly shaped to your paper plate, something that's small um, and something that your dog can target and run out to, so an uh, upturned frisbee. Um, we're gonna be using um, one of these rubber food bowl types of things that you can find at a feed store. That's what I'm using today. Um, a styrofoam plate. I've seen people use upturned metal dog dishes. It doesn't really matter. The object is just that you have something that your dog can see, that they can be sent to, and then be recalled back from. So today, that's what we're using is this, um, which is that rubber metal dog food dish or whatever you get it at a feed store. Uh, so the object of, oh, and also, by the way, today we're using my year and a half old Bernie's Mountain Dog, Tris, um, who definitely needs work on her recalls. I know. So I've been focusing on a lot of other things, and she's generally pretty good about sticking around me, but she really does need a formal recall, so it's a really a great opportunity for me to work this with her. Um, so the things that we're going to be working on today, the things that paper plate recalls help accomplish, aside from just teaching your dog to come, to come back to you when you call them, is going to be one, impulse control, right? Teaching a really solid sit-stay without you actually saying sit-stay. Uh, you can if you want. I typically don't say sit stay. Um, but we're teaching impulse control with that because what we're going to be doing, as you are going to see me practice this here in a minute with Tris, is I'm going to put her in a sit. I'm going to have her stay there. I'm going to walk away from her. I'm going to be putting food where she can see it on top of my paper plate, right? On top of my target object. I'm going to be coming back to her side, all right? So teaching impulse control in a sit state through that whole piece right there. Then what we're doing is teaching a send out because then I'm going to tell my dog to run over, grab the food that I put on top of our paper plate, our target object, and uh, tell her to grab that. Then I'm going to recall her back. So we're working on impulse control, right? Don't get a get up even though I'm putting food somewhere. We're working on uh, sit stay for the same reason. We're working on a send out and we're working on our recall, all right? When we teach the recall aspect and our dog runs back to us, one of my requirements, and you don't have to do this, but I highly suggest it, is doing a collar grab. And every single time a dog comes back, I grab their collar, and that is actually the end of the behavior and how your dog gets the reward. Uh, this happens for multiple reasons. Uh, and the collar grab, why we do it and why I find it so important is, one, you're teaching really positive um, message when you grab your dog's collar, something good happens. So you're creating and you're conditioning really positive associations grabbing your dog's collar, and that way they don't mind it, they don't become hand shy, they don't try to fight you if you need to grab their collar for whatever reason. The other part that is really important of why I require the collar grab is because when your dog comes back to you, they're not playing this like, I'm gonna run to you, bounce around you, run past you, maybe run around you. It is come means put your collar in my hand. And that is what the end of the behavior will equal, is that collar ends up in my hand. So I know when I call my dog to come, that's the behavior that I'm getting. Um, and so there's lots of really powerful pieces that happen with this game. And it's a hell of a lot of fun. Like your dog is going to love playing this game if you set it up right. So what I have today is two things that I'm gonna be feeding my dog. I have her everyday kibble. And then I have a high value reward, which today I just happen to be using. Uh, Happy Howie's Food Roll to Beef Flavor. So those are the two things that I have. And what I'm gonna start with when I start this game is I am going to put kibble on my target object and when my dog comes back to me, I'm going to reward with the high value. Now there's a reason I start with this. One, my dog is motivated for kibble, so I could use it for both, but I really want that returning to me is absolutely amazing. 
and it's not just going to be the food that I'm going to be doing. It's like tons of fun and play, and we get to jump around and have a great time because coming back to me is lots of fun, and it's really, really beneficial food-wise. Um, so there's a couple things that you might notice, and we'll talk about a little bit of troubleshooting right now before I actually start doing the training exercise. By the way, if you ever wonder where the name Frog Dog Friday came from, uh, this is it. I have three Bernie's Mountain Dogs, and they always lay in a frog dog position. So hence the name Frog Dog Friday, guys. Thank you, Tris, for showing everybody because nobody knows where that name came from. Um, so a little bit of troubleshooting. Sometimes what happens is because when a dog comes to, back to me, they know that they get the high value food. So running out to the object becomes less exciting and they don't want to necessarily run out when I send them and they just want to stick around me because why not? I'm where the fun stuff is. I'm where the good stuff is. So troubleshooting, I might end up putting high value food at the target and feeding kibble when the dog comes back to me. So I might do the reverse. So that way it becomes really exciting getting to run out as well. And it's really still fun, even though they're just getting kibble coming back to me, um, I'm still doing the play and the social aspect and all of the fun when they get back to me. Um, I might do high value reward out, high value reward in for a couple. I might switch it up. But what you might find is that the dog might run out and enjoy the running out, but then they get really silly and goofy and might not want to come back to me. If that's the case, I'm really going to start with a long line on my dog or a leash right in the beginning so I can build that coming back to me aspect. Um, they don't really have a choice, but I'm still going to make it lots and lots of fun. So there's some different pieces that we might run into. Uh, don't be afraid as you guys are practicing this to shoot me a message and say, hey, you know, this is what I ran into. How would you troubleshoot it? Because if I don't run into it here or I don't think of it right away off the top of my head, it's going to be hard for me to describe to you what to do in that aspect. So uh, Christopher's behind the camera. He's going to get ready because I'm about to move and we're going to start um, going through what, what we're going to be practicing. Um, all right, so I've got my object, my target behavior, or my target here. I'm going to set it down. I'm going to let my dog sniff it and become less interested. Now, good girl. Now, you can see I have done pause up on this object with her. No big deal. I don't care. She'll get over that really quickly. Um, all right, so I'm actually going to switch this around to my other side. So what I'm going to start with is calling Tris over here to me. I want to be within about a foot of the object. I'm going to ask my dog, Tris, sit. I'm going to put her in a sit. I'm going to have her stay right there. All right. I'm going to take one, two, three pieces at most of kibble. And I say this for a very important reason. I don't want my dog spreading kibble everywhere and taking three minutes to try to pick it all up and then wondering if they got it all and hanging out over here. Sit. So when I do this, my hand is moving around. When I do this, I only want one or two, three at most pieces of kibble, and I'll use three if I have to have a little bit more motivation, um, but that's what I'm looking for. I know I said sit and my dog laid down. I'm not a stickler about that. For those obedience people out there, it's fine for my dogs. Um, when I, The ones that I do obedience competitions with, I'm much pickier. So my dog is in a sit within about a foot or two of the object, all right, my target. I have my leash short. I'm right next to my dog. I'm gonna step out, sit. My dog says, oh, you're moving. I'm gonna put food down. I'm gonna keep my dog back with the leash. Sit. I'm gonna make sure she maintains that sit. Uh -uh. Set the pieces of kibble on top of my object, and then I'm gonna go back to my dog. She's back in her sit. She's gonna look at me, and I'm gonna say, take it, and point to the object. Then I'm gonna back up. Tris, come, and I'm gonna move until she comes to me and puts her collar in my hands. Yes. And then I'm gonna say yes, and I'm gonna do some food cakes and let her get it. Good girl, very nice, good job. All right, so that's typically how the first session's gonna go. So then I'm gonna bring her back here, and about the same distance, sit. I'm gonna put my dog in that, sit. I'm gonna make sure I hold on to that leash until I know she's really good at this. All right, uh-uh. Bend down, put the food, the kibble, onto my target. Take it, and I'm gonna direct her, then I'm gonna back up. Tris, come! And I'm gonna keep moving. Yes, until she gets to my hands. Good girl. Then I'm gonna go into food play. Good girl, very nice. Yeah, woohoo! We do some play and teach her that I'm fun, it's not just me being a pet dispenser. I want you to stick with me. Good girl. Now I'm going to move her back just a little bit further. 
Good. Put her on. Put her on that SIT. Step away. Put the food down onto my paper plate. Put her back into that SIT. Obviously, she needs work on her duration of six days. She looks at me. Take it. She goes. I back up. Tris, come. Yes. Good girl. Very nice. And we can do a little food play. Good girl. Very good. Oh, it's so good. Woo! Boy, good girl. All right. Very good. Good job. So I'm going to back her up just a little bit more. Sit. Good. Sit. Good. Take care. My dog lays down. What I'm looking for is the stationary position. I walk back to her side. She looks at me. Take it. She runs over. I can back up. Tris, come! She puts her collar in my hand. Yes, good girl. Very nice. Good job. Good girl. Very nice. Good job. Now, you noticed that time around I was able to drop her leash. I'm getting back to a distance where I literally can't hold her leash, make it over to the paper plate to my target object. She actually does better when I being a little bit further back from this. So Tris, sit. That's what I'm looking for. Leave her side. Now I'm each time using two pieces of kibble. Go back to her side. Uh -huh. Sit. Good. Sit. Good. She's looking at me. Take it. Back up. Tris, come. She puts her collar in my hand. Yes. Good girl. When she puts that collar in my hand, I say Y-E-S. And then we do play. Good girl. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Good girl. Very nice. Good girl. Ready? Kiss. You're not a great catcher. All right. So, good job. We had noticed when I move, she's still following me because I want to build that piece in where... I'm what's fun. Good girl. So each time, if you notice, sit. Good. I'm creating more and more distance from my target object. Now, troubleshooting. If your dog is not running out and taking it, uh-uh. Sit. Tris, sit. Good. If your dog is not running out and taking the object, or taking the food off the object, don't move back until you got your dog comfortably going out. All right? So come back to her side. Good. Take it. She runs out. I start moving back right away. Trish, come! Yes, good girl. Very nice. Good job. Good girl. Get it, get it, good girl. Ready, ready, ready. Go get it. Good girl. Good job. Good girl. Very nice. Excellent. All right. Sit. Good. Good. Good girl. So obviously I don't have an issue with motivation of her running out and coming back. My issue is I need to work on her. Not that she's moving forward, but she doesn't want to do a sit stay. Uh, she doesn't want to just, she wants to stand up. So that's the area that I need to be working on with my dog. Take it. Good. Trish, come. Yes, good girl. Very nice. Get that food. Good girl. Very nice. Now, you can see she's already getting tired. When I work this, oh, good girl. When I work this, I don't want to do too many reps in a row. Your dog gets tired really fast, and I don't want them losing interest. So, I'm going to do one more with her. Tris, sit. Stay. Uh-uh. You know what I'm doing is I'm telling her stay, and that's kind of the hand signal I use for a stand. And I just realized that. Don't do that. So, put my two pieces of kibble down. Now, I might get to a point where I'm pushing her back so far, she gets unsure about running forward to the uh, to the food. Take it! She might get a little hesitant, go, uh, and at that point, Tris, come! Yes! Good girl! Very nice. Good job. Good girl. And at that point, I might have to move.
move a little bit more forward for my dog, um, or I have to might run a little bit with her, so that way she's more comfortable, says, oh, okay, you still want me running that distance. Good job, very nice. You did really good. Yeah. So, my, by the way, my dogs are not perfect, and she's probably one of my least trained dogs as far as obedience. I know this. So, that's something to keep in mind. She doesn't have to be perfect um, to work on this. So, the idea is, is that your dog is in motion and moving when you need them to come. There is a no point where your dog is going to be in a sit stay or a down stay and you desperately need your recall. And they're like, oh, I'm already doing a sit stay down stay. Cool, let me come to you. No, they're going to be chasing a bunny or they're going to be chasing a lizard or they're going to be chasing a ball or frisbee across the street. Those are the times you need your dog to be able to come back to you when you call them. This is a very fun game. This is really easy for your dog to get and understand. When you get to the point, your dog's super motivated running out, your dog's super motivated coming back, I'm gonna put a long line on my dog and I'm gonna start doing this outside, all right? Uh, maybe in the backyard just to start, right? Once my dog's really comfortable, I got my dog running across the backyard. By the way, if I kept pushing her today, I would be across this entire warehouse just today in this short session, right? I'm already over halfway across it right now. Um, so by the end of one week, your dog should be booking it across a yard, your backyard, no problems. Once you got your dog doing that, you should have the long line and you should be able to be moving into the front of your house. Then you should go to a park, right? Each time you start and you add a new layer, a new environment, a new piece of distraction, start closer, go right back to the beginning, get your dog really comfortable. You're gonna be able to move away really quickly, but always start back close because you wanna set your dog up for success. If you end here one session, go to a new environment, and then try to start back here, your dog is gonna be like, nope, I have no idea what you're talking about. All right, so in the beginning, each time you add in a new element, a uh, new environment, new distraction, new handler, go right back to the beginning. Start close, maybe five feet if your dog's doing a really great job, and then progress very quickly backwards if you can. All right, don't get frustrated if your dog's a little bit distracted. Don't fr get frustrated you send your dog out and they go wander over there to sniff, all right? What you do is you just call your dog back to C-O-M-E and reel them in if you have to, right? I can get that, yes, get that collar grab, and now I can easily reward my dog for that. And I can do that without frustration, right? So just come, reel her in. Yes, and she's still getting a reward, and she's still being successful, even though I had to manufacture that part of it. Now, if that's what happens, your dog, you're at a park, you get to that level of distraction, and your dog blows off your target object and goes and sniffs or does something else, take it back a couple steps. Start much closer, all right? Um, maybe go to a quieter part of the park, something like that, because what you've done is you've increased the grade school model for your dog too much where they can't succeed, all right? If you have questions about this, let me know. It's a really, really fun game that's very simple for your dog to get. Um, if your dog doesn't want to hold a sit stay, all the way back over here. If your dog doesn't want to hold a sit stay right here, right? That's what we know we got to work on. Hold your leash close, and usually it takes about three times of you holding your dog back, saying, No, I need you to stay there, and you putting the food down. They might be trying to get to it, and you're just like, Nope, I'm not going until you put your butt to that ground. Boom, food goes down. Girl, right? So, that's exactly what that piece will look like if that's a troubleshooting piece that you need. Your dog doesn't want to hold that sit stay. All right? Um, like I said, if you're having trouble getting your dog motivated to run out, higher value on top of the target object. Okay? So, if you have questions, let me know. If not, I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Um, if you have anything that you want to learn or you want to go over next week for our Fog Dog Friday episode 11, let me know. Uh, until then, have a great week and have fun with this uh, paper plate recall exercise. You guys have a great weekend. See you later.